Hi there, we're Lauren and Kenzie, the co-hosts of A Scary State Podcast. Each week we cover a different state in the U.S. and we cover anything from murder mysteries, strange disappearances, paranormal activity, cryptids, or urban legends. So if you're interested in learning about the spooky things in your state, give us a listen. New episodes come out every Wednesday and you can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. Stay scary. Stay safe. Rick only came because you were coming today, Christy. It's true. Oh, shut up. That's that's what he really? said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aw, you're so sweet. So you're really holding this whole thing together right now. Yeah. So Aww. don't don't fuck it up. I got up at quarter to six in the morning for you two, so fuck your <laughs> that's why you're glue. If you're <laughs> if you even exist. I don't even want to get into it. Yeah. What was I gonna say? We for Rick's sake, I did you see I left in your buddy's plug at the Jack the Ripper two episode? So I did not. Hopefully, your buddy gets a little traffic eventually. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be funny. <laughs> Lately, the pod's been getting a lot more listens too. I don't know what I didn't do anything different. So yeah, he would just have no idea where it all came from. So that would be <laughs> yeah. Just don't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't plan to. <laughs> I haven't said anything. <laughs> or you could tell him to like listen to your podcast. I guess I, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> he's more he's more of like an acquaintance. Oh, I see. I like his work, so I uh, that's why that's why I plug him. If you like his work, you know, drop in the comments about your favorite work that you like. <laughs> Christy, you're a Star Wars person. What do you think of the Yoda behind him? I'm not a Star Wars person. I thought you were. <laughs> that's all right. I'm also I'm also not a Star Wars person. Believe it or not. Who painted it? Did you paint it? If you painted uh, it, then it's amazing. What's the alternative? <laughs> yeah, what's the alternative? I want to hear the alternative. He looks. You... He looks a little bit like Mr. Bean. <laughs> All right. Well, if you want, if you want a Yoda that kind of looks like Mr. Bean, check out Bennett Rambo Art on on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, art. Look, living with my wife, I have learned very quickly that art is very subjective. So, is that like a knock on Bo? No, not at all. Not at all. But there's some things that... Was that like, yeah, I've seen a lot of Bo's art. Art subjective. <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. She's an amazing artist because everyone knows, as everyone knows, she does our merch for us. So, but no, no, just over the years, I've learned that art is very subjective. You just go to the art gallery and look at the stuff that people pay millions of dollars for and you just go, I wouldn't pay anything for that. If you love it, Rick, that's all that matters. I do. All right. Well, let me get into it here with you guys. Poor RJ's not here. He was actually, Aww. when I re-listened to this episode, because it came out eight months ago. Wow. Yeah. RJ, RJ didn't, he wasn't the, the vocal one in this one. Rick was. So I'm glad Rick got to come to this little bonus episode we got going on for you guys. I don't remember which one. I'll tell you in a vocal second. Vocal about what? Yeah. You were vocal about this episode. And in July of this year 2022 after about four months after we released our episode on this subject i kept seeing fucking articles everywhere summerton man solved after 73 Mm -hmm. years the summerton man's finally been solved i'm like are you fucking kidding me we we put out the answer someone takes our solve and then they bring it to like the authorities or something and then we get shafted Mm -hmm. again yep Right, Ricky? You remember Summerton Man? I do. I look once I saw the picture of him, then I I remembered it. I kept saying solved. So I start looking into it, like, okay, they took our fucking answer. I'm I'm copywriting this shit. I'm gonna send some podcasts to some people. We need the credit for this. Then I look, we have an update on the Summerton Man. Let's not let's get let's not get ahead of ourselves, Professor Mm -hmm. Abbott. An elite team of private detectives. What if balloons are aliens? Maybe that's the key component we're missing. Cover-ups. John's guilty. Mysteries that need to be solved. Maybe Mormons need mountains. Richard, shut up. I don't know if you guys remember Professor Abbott from the episode. Yeah. He was the guy that uh, obsessed with the Summerton man. Like he thought that some guy, I guess they were spies and they had a kid and then he disappeared. Then he married like the granddaughter of the guy he thought was the Summerton man. Remember this guy, this professor? Yes. Yeah. And then he was doing like DNA testing. He was trying to get the body exhumed so he could do DNA testing to see if he was right. Well, he did a, something. He, I, I think he figured out who the Summerton man was. That's about it. Though. 
Mm. Nothing surrounding the Timum Shud, why he had that thing sewn into his pants. No, oh, well, it's, it's not solved then, is it? He's basically just figured out a name. Exactly. There's not really a solve. Get the fuck out of here, Abbott. Yeah. The best part about the whole solve is, okay, so he was going to get the, the whole body exhumed. The South Australian police did exhume it, but didn't give Derek Abbott, like, you can't come and go do that. We're going to do this for the police. So that is still happening as we talk right now. And I don't know if I'm going to do an update beyond today. Maybe if they actually come up with something groundbreaking, uh, when the uh, police actually give the report, maybe we'll do another one. But as of right now, the police haven't given the report, but do you remember they made a bust of the Summerton man out of plaster? Yes. In the episode, I talked about how there was some hair that was stuck in the bust from the Summerton man. So Derek Abbott got some of that, uh, hair and did some DNA tests himself. How the hell did he do that? Like Mission Impossible fucking Tom Cruise? Uh, he got permission. Like he put in all the requests okay. to get it. Yeah. Yeah. So he got that. And he just basically did it through like, like Giannola. Uh, 23 and Me. <laughs> they, they basically have that now, uh, 23 and Me, but for like police. But you have to like upload your own. 23 and Me right. won't give you their fucking, your DNA. So don't worry, Rick. Whatever 23 and me you did, your identity as of whatever murder, whatever you do on the off time safe. Okay. You have to like take your. Uh, wait. I could have where they were acquired by someone else. 23 and me, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, probably. But they're still, they still offer anonymity to it. You have to upload it to another thing called Jed Match, or there's another one I can't remember. And then they use those databases to solve cold cases which they've been doing all sorts of places like they solved the original night stalker or what the fuck's that guy's name the go- not the golden, golden state. state yeah golden state killer and they solved a bunch of other cases with this anyways they got they got a bunch of them solved because of that now so if you guys ever got the your 23 me or whatever other dna thing you guys might have gone through send it into jed match you could you could figure out a whole bunch you could help figure out a whole bunch of stuff that's going on in the world right now it's pretty actually out there for all u.s citizens because of your first and fifth amendment right please do not do that <laughs> why not <laughs> you should you should not do that you should not what are you, what are you send scared your of? dna anywhere <laughs> what are you scared of what's what are you what are you scared of rick you never know you never know it's the same reason that you just don't talk to police officers you just you don't need to open up that can of worms <laughs> Okay. One of my best friends is a police officer. I w- if he pulled me over, I would just completely say nothing. <laughs> don't trust the system. If you get pulled over, you don't say anything? Uh, I plead the fifth. The whole time. I, I only... You just roll down the window and go, like, I plead the fifth. You don't even fucking I give them my license, my registration. I plead the fifth because what they try and do is gain evidence on the scene. So the first thing that, let's say you were speeding. Well, let's say you may or may not have been speeding. And you get, yeah, you were allegedly (laughs) speeding. You get pulled over and they said, do you know why I pulled you over? The reason they asked you that is because they want you to immediately start admitting fault. So you might say my registration's expired and they pulled you over for a busted taillight. And now they're like, oh shit. Okay. I'm going to get you on that. So you just don't say anything because you will never outsmart them. They know exactly what they're doing. They know how to question you and they're allowed to lie. So just don't talk to cops and definitely don't give anyone your DNA. What do you think they're going to do with your DNA, Ricky? What, what have you done? Listen, okay. First off, you could upload your DNA somewhere. We are, not, we cannot be that far out in sci-fi future where people are now reverse engineering, creating your DNA, downloading it and making it look like you did crimes. Is that what you think? Okay. So you think it's going to go the opposite? That's not, that's not the reason I wouldn't upload it. I wouldn't upload it just because from a privacy aspect, you shouldn't upload it. But I think, I think long term, it's it's a dangerous game to play. I think just having shit out there in the wild. But they're like they're stopping murderers and shit. You could have a creepy uncle out there that's out there raping. You could stop that creepy uncle right now. Yeah, I think they should. They're not going to automatically just find like who it is from me uploading my DNA anyway. Well, they could help. Maybe, maybe. But like now, it's not worth giving up my. <laughs> my civil liberties i would say i could help this but is, i'm not gonna <laughs> this is like this is like an entire this is like an entire entire college, college course i took on surveillance everyone used to always say like well if you have nothing to hide why not and it's just like just because you have nothing to hide doesn't mean that you should give up your own privacy and civil liberties it's the whole idea of like the panopticon the minute that you give up all of your privacy aspects and your civil liberties they'll just keep wanting more and just keep taking and taking and taking you gotta draw a line somewhere 
So I think DNA is a pretty good place to draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. If you're taking a shit, you're not doing anything wrong. We don't want anybody watching. I get that. Yeah, yeah exactly. But I, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm not even gonna get. I'm more on the. <laughs> I'm arguing the opposite of myself because I wouldn't even get my fucking blood tested by any of these places because they have that information, anonymity or not. So <laughs> I'm with you. But uh, just. I don't know if you want to solve a cold case, help them out. If not, whatever, cool. I, w- I wouldn't do it for the simple fact that if I did, every single one of my family members would be in jail. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to solve cold crimes when you got an island of criminals. Exactly. They just pinpoint which ones. <laughs> anyway, so that that's what they did. They basically took this guy's hair and they ran it through the, the old Jed match. And... Him, like Professor Derek Abbott and American genealogist Colleen Fitzpatrick, uh, use familial genealogy to identify the Summerton man. They think it's not been confirmed yet, but Dr. Fitzpatrick says, like, I'm a scientist. I pretty goddamn sure. 99%. She can't confirm it yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold the fuck up. They have talked to the family. You're telling me we now believe people when they are just like, I'm a scientist. It's 99% (laughs) true. Well, she's only giving the 1% variance because, like, they haven't talked to the family. But, like, the way it, it's somebody in that family, regardless, because like this guy's family, it just might not be that guy specifically. You know what I mean? Oh, because gosh. they got matches on either side, parental sides, and they've narrowed it down to the one guy they can't find. Any history of uh, any death certificate at all for this guy? Uh, what happened past 1948? They found a guy who was an electrical engineer named carl webb he's 43 years old at the time if if it was him he's from victoria i don't know the difference in victoria and where like summerton beach is christy like is that a far distance away because they say he went there um i remember you guys arguing about the little dippy part in the fucking island (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's just it's a state over so it's not it's not too far you can you can drive it okay I was just wondering yes. how far he had to travel to go there, but uh, not much is known about Carl Webb, really, Charles Webb, uh, but there's a few things they do know. Wait, 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 wait. Yep. His full name is Charles and he goes by Carl? Yeah, no, it's weird. I, I, I've never seen that. I either. don't believe this. I don't believe this for a second. <laughs> That's made up as shit. Also, first Google answer that popped up for my DNA matches with people you are not really to search is... Yes, it is possible to share a small amount of DNA with someone and not be related. Oh, for sure. But it's also way more if you take that's that one percent. That's that one percent. That's covering our own ass. Yeah, for sure. For sure. It's, it's this everything's possible. It's not a hundred percent like you it's one in forty billion DNA matches. There's only six or eight billion of us on the earth, so it's pretty fucking spot on DNA, but it's also taken from like a hundred different DNAs or 4,000 different DNA samples. They took this from and narrowed it down to who they think it is by piecing it all together. So I, I sure it might not be him. Carl is the biggest fucking uh, red flag of this whole thing so far. His name's Charles, not Carl. Yeah. He was the youngest of six kids. Uh, his older siblings were Russell, Frida, Gladys, Doris, and Roy. So they should have enough family to fucking ask about this guy. Uh, his parents owned a bakery in Springvale, which is a suburb of Melbourne, where all the kids worked at. Now, the Summerton man did have a burn scar on his left forearm that they now are thinking that was probably from working in the bakery, from burning his hand, like taking bread out or something. Uh, information also attained says that Carl Webb used to play footy and is a keen bridge player. Is footy like soccer or America? No, no. What's footy? Australian rules. AFL. Oh, okay. So yes, the, the you guys got their oval court, your oval looking fucked up football. That's what they're what doing. What is Australian I'm, rules? Look at Australian football. Look it up. I She told me about this before I looked it up. I'm like, what are you guys doing? They made an oval. Yeah. It's not even square anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the, the, the ground is oval. The ball is oval. <laughs> Basically, you just got to get the ball from one end to the other. There's um, like 16 players on a team and you basically just kick it as far as you can. And if anyone else from the other team gets it, you basically just punch them as hard as you can. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't wear any... We don't wear any protective gear, no headgear, no like shoulder pads or whatever, like all 
anything like that. And the guys wear the, the smallest shorts they possibly can find. Well, yeah, that's actually kind of hot. But there's got to be a lot of like CTE. Oh, so much. <laughs> 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 like oh my god you're like you sound like you're 80 i'm 25 <laughs> yeah does anyone uh, outside oh, of see... australia play australian rules football yeah we went to one of our teams went over to ireland and played a game with a team over there really anybody on an island just plays this game <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if anyone wants more information, you can go to worldfootynews.com. <laughs> that sounds a lot different than what it is. <laughs> that sounds like there's a foot fetish uh, around. I, I'm yeah. sure there is. I'm sure if you're watching this. Yeah, I'm sure there is. <laughs> so, okay. So I'll explain the DNA a little bit more here. So the DNA was matched with two different people in the Webb family on either parent side. And they triangulated his identity from there. So Carl Whip disappeared from records around the same time, the discovery of the Summerton man. And it was said that he was just separated from his wife, Dorothy, at the time. Dorothy was 21 when she, they got married and he was 35. So there's a big age gap. The divorce papers filed and the divorce of Webb and his wife say that he was into playing cards uh, listed as the reasoning as desertion. And he was into cards. So I'm thinking this guy was like a gambler or something. There's a lot more, there's some more information mm. coming into this. Yeah. She actually, when she divorced him, she moved to Southern Australia. What's his nuts thinks that's why Carl went there was to go find her. Uh, Dr. Abbott or professor Abbott. He's not a doctor. He's a professor. Right. They did the DNA test on the hair on Abbott's wife too, to see if she was actually related to this guy. Because if it was Carl Webb, maybe it was Carl Webb having sex with Jesse Joe, the nurse who had the Russian accent, you remember? And maybe that's where the, the line was. Uh, nope, not even yep. close. No relation. So I find that hilarious. This guy found the one relative, married yeah. her, told his kids that they're related to them. They, he has a picture, remember? A picture in his fucking house over top of the playroom? Yeah, no, not the guy. Just a guy. Mm -hmm. um, so I wonder if that's going to put any strain on their relationship. A couple things that go with Carl being the Summerton man. So Carl's brother, Roy, was in the Australian military during World War II where he died in 1943. There is a photo of Roy Webb from his military service, and he looks a lot like the bust of the Summerton Man, I will say it. I'll, I'll give it that. Uh, it's not proof, but it's a piece of the puzzle, and it starts to like fit into a bigger picture here. So you remember how he had clothes that had all the stuff ripped out, and only two pieces of clothing had T. Keen written in it? Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Turns out Webb's brother-in-law, his last name was Keen. So Thomas Gerald Keene, T. Keene, was married to Frida, oh. one of his sisters. All right. And they traced the photo of John Russell Keene, the son of the Gerald and Frida. He looks like enough like uh, the Summerton man, not family. You know, when people look alike when they're family, it doesn't really look exactly. But he was in the Royal Australian Air mm -hmm. Force during World War II, and he died as a POW in Malaysia in 1943 as well. When he died, though. Uh, all of his stuff was sent back to his parents, which was his uh, was Carl Webb's sister, Frida. All right. John Keene and Carl Webb were the same size. And it could be the other clothes that he were wearing were those of his dead nephew. He got them from his sister because she lived in Southern Australia. So they assume he was going down to visit his sister to go find his wife. And maybe he just didn't have any clothes and he just borrowed some shit from her. I don't know. Right. Abbott also tries to explain the codes in the book. Do you guys remember the code? There's weird code book like he had the book the ruby at and it had a bunch of writings in it yes so abbott thinks yeah. that <laughs> all these letters aren't a soviet password or some shit like that he thinks it's just the first letters of a bunch of racehorse names this guy was just a gambler and a racehorse Aww. he says some people do it that way I, he he didn't really i couldn't really figure out why he would assume that out of all things but so maybe this was part of his shtick maybe you just went and fucking watched the horse races right they say carl webb was specifically into horse racing as well it's not like he was just a bridge player he was into like all forms of gambling yeah this is just abbott guessing but it does seem more likely that it is a bunch of horses names rather than some soviet spies yeah. <laughs> but it's more fun to say it's soviet spies it's, real, oh, it's a lot more fun for sure much more so you said the you said the brother-in-law's name is thomas Keene. yes did you ever see the blacklist I have not seen the blacklist. So one of the main characters is a spy that is embedded 
living with the actual main character, like the wife. His name is Tom King. Oh, so it's yeah. like double. It's like James Bond. Every yeah. every spy in Australia is named Thomas Keen. <laughs> <laughs> just seems just seems a little weird. No, it's yes. true. That's that's an interesting uh, interesting. Like that's so random, but it's simulation, man. It's so random, but it's like not random. Yeah. Webb being Summerton man still doesn't explain like any of the actual mystery. His name, sure. But like why the poem? Um, how did he die? Why all the different tickets going different places? Uh, was yeah. this intentional? Like did did he kill himself? Was he killed? Did he owe a bunch of money to some fucking gangsters who killed him? Or was he just a fucking spy? Like, was he actually just a spy? Just a different guy? Mm -hmm. A lot of military people in his family. Maybe he was just part of that roundabout way too. In a roundabout way as well. Without the results of the full exhumation, uh, we might not ever find out why he died or how he died. Uh, And even if so, I, I think we talked about this in the episode as well. The DNA and all that kind of stuff might be all messed up because of the preservation process. Because for some reason, you guys get taxidermists to do your preserving of dead bodies in Australia. I, I, I don't. I don't think we do that anymore. <laughs> <but> <laughs> I think we've progressed a little bit, but I'm yeah. sure at the time we didn't have a lot of <laughs> a lot of professional people doing that. So. Oh, for sure. Next best, next best thing. A human's just like an animal, you know. Just rip the guts out and stuff them <laughs> full of straw, and <laughs> just just pin it, pin the face to the piece of fucking foam. It'll be fine. It looks good. Here's some marbles. Make his eyes look good. Oh, so God. did this this scientist have a new explanation for the Tamam Shun thing that was written? No, Shud? no, that's what I mean. This. This mystery is just being renamed now. It's not even, the mystery is not even gone. The mystery is instead of like the Summerton man, it's just going to be called what happened to Carl Webb, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like his name's Charles. Chuck. This is ridiculous. Chucky Webb. Chucky Webb. <laughs> I would accept that. I would accept that. Chuck Dubs. Carl. Carl. Yeah, he's, he's definitely more like in Australia to be called Chucky or at least Charlie. I wouldn't yeah. call him Carl. That's nah. I'm like, I'm more interested to see what the cops have to say now that they did dig up the body. I want to see if they can actually, years of forensic science uh, have happened, like 73 years worth. So they could probably figure out what poison it is now, maybe. You know what I mean? Like maybe mm. they could figure out, maybe just had like a weird heart attack from eating something. Maybe that pasty that he had just disgusted him so much. <laughs> just died on the beach. Well, if his family owned a bakery, they would have made their own pasties. So he probably ate it and was just so disgusted that it wasn't as good as his family's that he just dropped dead. For sure. Yeah. So I, I I just want everyone to know that this is not, this is solved. We solved it months ago, but it's not solved by fucking numbnuts Abbott. Okay. He just figured out a name. Who gives a shit about a name? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's all that they had for for this. This is what's the big news, guys. That was the big news, Carl Webb. Uh, so no. the only way that I will like really believe all of this bullshit is I need to see the list of horses that were racing in 1948 because like somebody tacking that on doesn't really make sense because if you look at his note, one of the lines is it starts with T T M T. So how are you going to know that if they're all the first names of a different horse, how are you going to know the difference between T or T or T? Agreed. Yes. Maybe it's T. So like there's no, there's, there's no separation between any of these letters. So like, even if he was, you know, if he gambled all the time, how are you going to look at this and be like, ah, yes, I wrote down T, T, M, T. Like I, I need more than that. Or at least like a divider between the letters. Agreed. I, I don't really buy the whole, this is just Abbott talking. He still wants to be famous. Like, dude, he's been looking at this for 20 years. Like, imagine, mm-hmm. I, and I shouldn't say this, mean, like, he's, he's in, has his heart in the right place, but man, you wasted your life. You know, so you got to, you got to start at a certain point after like 20 years of looking into something and not getting anywhere, you got to start making shit up. Just like, I want to know life. if the scientist that discovered this DNA match is actually working with the Russians trying to get some of the bad press off of him after we called them out on this. Because yeah, we all know they have a lot of bad press right now. 
It was very timely, very timely song. Colleen Fitzpatrick, and I agree with you, um, but I, I didn't even think to look up Colleen Fitzpatrick to see her her credentials. I just assumed, because that's the problem with the world today, and I I've, I just fell victim to it. You see doctor in front of things, and you start trusting them, you know? Doctor in what? Yep. Soviet spy? Mm. You got a doctorate in Soviet spyage? Spycraft? <laughs> <laughs> Colleen Fitzpatrick. I... I Put it this way, I know I know for a fact that this familial genealogy shit works wonders. Um, they've done a lot with it, and it's only getting better as time goes. So I, I wouldn't be shocked if they're right that it's this Carl or Charlie, Chuck Webb. Mm-hmm. Oh, the rest of it, it's still a fucking mystery. Yeah, that's and fine. Like, they've just they've literally just given us a name. Once but, they've once they figured out all the rest of the stuff, then they can come back to us. Yeah, the media is a bunch of fuckheads too about this stuff right away solved like bbc wrote summerton Ma- mystery solved that's like a reputable source of information that i use a lot i find the bbc is very well does a very good job reporting mm-hmm. but that fucking headline is terrible how many yeah. how many mysteries do you think a person solves in their lifetime well we're at like 34 now so like besides us because this colleen fitzpatrick also helped identify the remains found in the crash site of Northwest Flight 4422 that crashed in Alaska in 1948. And Sergeant Mann died in 1948. Why is she only looking at shit from 1948? She's just that far behind? She's the handler for all the 1948 cleanup. Cases, from the covering shit yeah. up. This this flight was a flight from um, Alaska to Shanghai. How often, how often does that happen? Never. Like, never. Only She's when covering there's... shit up. 100%. Yeah, if there's a spy convention in Alaska, maybe, but that's about it. 100% Whoa. she's covering this shit up. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they haven't solved it. They've just she's just, they've just added way more mystery to the whole thing. Uh, in a way, like, tongue-in-cheekness aside, in a way, you're, I, I agree with you. Like, adding Carl Webb's name to this whole thing just makes it more confusing. This is just a poor schlub. You know, like mm-hmm. a sad man. Why does he have this shit sewn into his pants? What the fuck is going yeah. on here? She's actually got, she's probably got like 20 or 30 different forensic things that she helped solve. And now I'm really curious if all of these have like a potential spy ring to them. Yeah. <laughs> They're all from 1948. We know that much already. No, 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 no. That was just the one that was mentioned at the top. She actually, she has a ton of them. She was a part of some, the DNA Doe Project, which has the aim of identifying dead adults for their families. And then it says... In parentheses, they avoid investigating dead children. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a little oh. harder, but didn't DNA Doe uh, is actually of uh, we've mentioned them on Unethical before because they are the ones. If I'm not mistaken, I'd have to re-listen to the episode, but they are the ones that just recently identified a few of Gacy's victims, and we talked about that with Bob oh. Mata. Yeah, so they're they're actually doing the, those, these are the people exactly who I'm talking about are like solving shit. So she she resigned from the DNA Doe project in 2020. So we can talk shit on her without talking shit on them. Yeah, even so, I don't oh. mind talking shit about everyone. It's a fucking joke. <laughs> joke podcast. But yeah, no, she quit because she she got busted for being a spy. Yeah. <laughs> must have. She must have. She they like asked her name and she like turned around and said something in Russian. She went, ah, oh. you know, like <laughs> there's a lot of cases here I've never even heard of. Yeah. Yeah, no, a lot of unsolved cases out there, man, that are just fall by the wayside. They don't have enough glamour to hit the the, the front pages, you know? So it's mm-hmm. pretty sad, actually. Uh, the more I look into cases just for us, is the, it gets, because I've been, done a lot of the big ones, so it gets a lot harder to find them. And then you just start finding these weird, random ones. You're like, that one is super sad. Like, yeah, it gets depressing. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, so I, I, I do... I think that there's more to come on this. I don't know if they're going to ever solve this completely past what we already solved. So good luck. Mm. Uh, this is the update that I am going to give. And I don't think we're going to, there's going to be another one unless something outlandish like Colleen Fitzpatrick comes out and goes like, he was a spy. Then we'll have to actually talk about it. Maybe get, make some calls to some people, you know, is she wearing a U.S. Marshals pin? She does look like a U.S. Marshal. Is oh she, <laughs> she, she, okay, wait, I, I should have said can that. Can you see my, can you see my whole thing? Yeah. This is yeah. definitely a U.S. Marshal pin. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, it looks what? like a U.S. Marshal I'm just saying, a lot of shady shit in this world or the simulation is glitching. Like, they didn't have enough people to do both the, the DNA tests and relocate people, but, like, nah. She's exposed to international... Oh, wait. Fire. She's a U.S. Marshal of Northern Ohio. 
There you go. Citizen of the year. But if you look up higher, if you look one up from that where you just had award highlights, that's where Rick read that in a in a style that says award highlights. One up says fifth place GHT cold case hit of the year. What does that mean? Are they betting on this shit? Are they a bunch of fucking gamblers? Hit of the year. <laughs> Wait, what what place are we? <laughs> cold case hit of the year? Golden Wait, State Killer Case. What does GHT stand for? That doesn't even pop up. She's just listing random shit here. Yeah, fifth place. She did that. <laughs> she, she's been fifth place twice in the GHT. Yep. Armed, Armed forces. forces. Armed forces. Oh. Spy. I'm telling you, there's way too many fucking military connections here for something shady not yeah. to be going on. Mm-hmm. It's just like the government when they released all their new like UFO shit, and then they started calling it UAPs instead of UFOs. People are covering shit up. I don't trust it. Don't give your DNA to twenty three and me. Give your to give your DNA. Don't be don't be such. Just give your DNA. No, I'm not talking no. to you. I'm talking to the. Don't listen to Rick. I'm also talking to listeners as not your <laughs> lawyer. If you're Canadian, I don't care what you do. Actually, you guys have more privacy protections than we do, so you guys are probably better off. So you probably should not be giving your DNA out in Canada. In the United States, you definitely should not be giving your DNA out. No, I, I legitimately would not. I, I don't care. I'm not that interested. I'll just keep being called a fucking Nazi all the time by you guys because I say I'm if you, if you really, If you really <laughs> want to give your DNA out, just find someone you can settle down with and just spit in their mouth. But honestly, like, oh. let's let's think about this a little bit more too and then we'll get out of here. If somebody wants my DNA, like I get giving it up just makes it really easy, but if somebody wants my DNA, it's very easy to get. Mm-hmm. With that attitude. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, like- nothing, uh-huh. le- nothing leaves my house. With my DNA on it. Oh, yeah? What about your hands? And are you touching doorknobs? What do you think? Am I just touching random people? Are you touching things all day long? Whether you know Like what? Not? What am I touching? Doorknobs. Right there. I, just don't, I don't have doorknobs. You don't have doorknobs. There's no, no doorknobs anywhere. The doors open when I walk. He's one of those people that's got the, he's got the chip <laughs> in his wrist and he's just like, beep. When I walk up to the door, it just opens, yeah. Your car door. It's contactless. It's, it's a COVID thing. Your car door. Again, yeah. Contact you wipe books. down your car. You wipe down your car. Every t- it's not contactless. You're full of shit. You get in your car. By well, when I go into the wild, I wear gloves. <laughs> yep. And then I wear a mask. And <laughs> most people think it's for COVID, but it's so uh, that my DNA can't be collected. Okay. You don't, you don't ever go to out for lunch and have a beer? I go out right? for lunch. Have yeah. a beer? What do you well, I bring, Yeah, but I bring, my own, I bring my own stuff and then I take it back. He brings his me. own utensils and plates. And- yeah. <laughs> You don't take shits yeah. in public? Do you take the shit home with you? No. All right. No, I don't take shits in public. <laughs> you don't go to like somewhere if you got a I'm shit. I'm a civil man. I'm a civil man. I have a schedule. <laughs> My schedule does not involve me going out and taking shits at random places at random times during the day. He sets his schedule by it, Richard. He doesn't leave the house <laughs> until it's happened. <laughs> yes. You stay I don't in there need to. O'clock. My body is a fortress. It is set up. It is ready. <laughs> <laughs> you, wait, wait, you've you've never gone like 16 watermelon flavored beers too many and just had the fucking beer shits the next day can't help yourself i hate everything watermelon flavor watermelon <laughs> flavor. So, no you missed the i literally cannot point stand, of what i was saying i cannot stand watermelon <laughs> i also i don't really like the fruit watermelon that much i'd rather just have the water i agree the water, melons all melons are overrated it's all bad yeah yes Okay, so you'd never leave DNA anywhere. No. Ever. That's no. for that's horseshit. Have you ever been to the doctor? No. No. Okay. So <laughs> I don't need to go to the doctor. Like you said, his body's a fortress. I have the internet. I know everything. He doesn't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know everything about it being a doctor. What about when you were a child? Did your parents like keep your like belly butt like your your umbilical cord chunk or something? Is that hidden around your house somewhere just in case? A little jar? I don't know, but I've had the I've had the COVID vaccine since then, so my DNA is probably different. So that doesn't really matter to me. Well, your DNA was on the tip of that needle. As soon as they poked that needle in you, they pulled it out and DNA took it. It's gone. He took it home. Yeah. True. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're fucked. The yeah. government's out to get you too, so they obviously did that. They've been waiting for an opportunity. And I've been wearing gloves my entire life for nothing. I literally just <laughs> let them just poke a needle in my arm. Yep. All right. Well, hopefully, hopefully, with the help of uh, Rick's DNA that the government has newly acquired, we can solve more cold case crimes. Thanks for coming, guys. I want to walk behind you, like just watch you live for a day, Rick. I want to see you cleaning up after yourself all day. I want to observe this. My girlfriend, uh, my girlfriend owns a, a cleaning company. 
Does she? I'm not, even bullshit. I'm not even bullshitting about that. Of course she, of course she does. This sounds more like she's on the, she's a counter agent and she's collecting oh. your DNA and cleaning it after. Have you looked into her background? Have I looked into her background? Yeah. Have you done a deep dive? You just looked into fucking Colleen Fitzpatrick like a, like a fiend. Have you done this to your girlfriend yet? There's a, there's a lot of jokes there. There's a lot of jokes to unpack <laughs> and I don't have the time to do it. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. I performed a deep dive. Okay. <laughs> I bet you have. Did you wipe her down after? You're like, get over here. <laughs> no, she owns the cleaning company. This is what you don't understand. That is not my job. I just watch Private Dicks and I think RJ's the funniest. What? Come on! Hey there, all you private dickheads. That's probably not the name we're gonna stick with. Anyways, uh, RJ here. I am here to tell you thank you for listening to another episode of Private Dicks. If you liked what you heard, go on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere they take your reviews, drop us five stars, say something nice. Also, what you just heard was from last season. If you want current episodes as they're dropped, head on over to patreon.com and search up Unethical Podcast. That's our mother podcast. I was not aware Private Dicks was a spinoff. I'm going to renegotiate my contract. On Patreon is a full 16-episode season more of Private Dicks, uncut videos of each episode, and many more things are getting added all the time. You can also find all of Unethical's content on there, so go listen to that. And... If you're already a patron, fuck yeah, dude. You're the best.